The Mitchell ascending system was originally developed by Dick Mitchell in the 1960s as a more efficient version of the early Jumar system. It is not quite as fast as a double bungee rope walker system at climbing free hanging ropes, but it is faster than a frog system. It isn't quite as efficient as a frog system at technical rope maneuvers such as crossing rebelays, crossing knots, and changeovers, but is more efficient at these maneuvers than a rope walker. It is very popular with top heavy climbers that need to negotiate technical rigging and who may find the frog system to be uncomfortable and inefficient for their body type. The Mitchell system is also probably the fastest at down climbing rope. Basic components of the Mitchell system include two ascenders, one for each foot, with foot loops attached to each ascender, and a double chest roller. A pair of cow's tails is recommended, and some cavers use a third ascender or quick attach safety. A caving style seat harness that utilizes two clipping points and a D-shaped quick link is recommended. The most critical part of the system is the double roller and chest harness. The rope passes through one of the rollers, which helps hold the caver in a relatively comfortable and efficient upright position. The long foot loop passes through the other roller. CMI Ultra Ascenders are the most popular choice for use with the Mitchell system due to the ease with which they slide up the rope, the ease with which they can down climb, and the large loop that can be grabbed from above to advance the lower ascender up the rope. However, other styles of ascenders may also be used. The upper ascender is equipped with a dedicated long foot loop made of kern mantle rope. This is usually made from a static rope of 8 to 10 millimeters in diameter and tied directly to the ascender for simplicity and to allow the ascender to ride low relative to the chest roller. Caution should be used when tying the foot loop directly to ascenders. A small length of tubular webbing can be used for protection and these connections should be inspected regularly. A barrel knot is recommended for connection of the foot loop to the ascender and the tail should be secured up and out of the way. The long foot loop should be adjusted so that the ascender is about one inch above the chest roller at full extension. In traditional Mitchell systems, there is no tether to the upper ascender, but I strongly recommend using a long cow's tail as a tether. This ensures a safe, secondary connection to the harness in the event the chest roller fails, and it also allows the caver to sit down and wait the upper ascender if a rest is needed. The lower ascender is attached to a shorter foot loop such that it rides around mid-thigh. It should be high enough to be easily reached, but low enough to allow a high step without contacting the chest roller. There is also a safety tether that connects the lower ascender to the seat harness. The foot loop and safety tether are commonly made from a single length of static rope. To get on rope, begin by attaching the upper ascender and chest roller, followed by the lower ascender. To climb, both ascenders must be advanced by hand in a synchronous motion where the right hand and right foot are simultaneously raised followed by raising the left hand and foot. The cam on the lower sender may be thumbed when first getting off the ground to prevent pulling up the tail of the rope. Stand up straight and alternate steps as if climbing a ladder. To change over from ascending to descending, first remove the chest roller and sit down. Attach the rappel device to the rope below the lower sender and lock it off. Shift weight onto the lower ascender and slide the upper ascender down the rope until the descender is weighted. Remove the lower ascender from the rope, inspect and test the descender for proper operation, then remove the upper ascender and begin to repel. To change over from descending to ascending, first lock off the descender, then attach the upper ascender to the rope and slide it high. Attach the lower ascender to the rope, stand up on it, and slide the upper ascender until it can be weighted. Remove the descender from the rope, then stand up and attach the chest roller, and begin to climb. Cross a knot while descending, first repel onto the knot or lock off just above it. Then attach the upper and lower senders to the rope. Ascend a short distance until the descender can be unweighted. 
then remove it from the rope and reattach it to the rope below the knot and lock it off. By transferring weight between the two ascenders, down climb until the descender is weighted. Remove the lower ascender, then inspect and test the descender for proper operation. Finally, remove the upper ascender and continue to repel. To cross a knot while ascending, climb up to just below the knot, then clip into the loop with the short cow's tail. Remove the upper ascender and reinstall it on the rope just above the knot. Then remove the chest roller from the rope. Climb a little higher until it's possible to move the lower ascender past the knot and reinstall it above the knot. Reattach the chest roller, then remove the cow's tail from the loop and continue to climb. To cross a rebelay while climbing, Remove the chest roller before reaching the anchor to prevent being pulled into the rock. Continue to climb until you can attach a short cow's tail to the anchor. Move the lower ascender from the lower rope to the upper rope, followed by the upper ascender. Climb until the cow's tail is unweighted, then remove it from the anchor. Reattach the chest roller and continue to climb. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please click the like button. Subscribe if you aren't already, so you can learn about other videos on the subject of caving, and comment below to let me know how I'm doing or to suggest other caving-related topics.